Hello and welcome to another Doppler lecture. So this time uh, we're going to start going over the Doppler modalities. And uh, as I said before, this is a very interesting topic. So we're going to we're going to basically recognize what is the difference between continuous wave Doppler. So we're going to start with that one. Then uh, later pulsed wave Doppler. Then we're gonna spend a lot of time learning about color flow. There's a lot of information for color flow. And then after that, we're gonna learn about pulse wave. So of course, this is not going to be in only one lecture. So I'm just gonna give you time for you to understand all of this. And um, also, uh, after this, we're going to learn about the Doppler artifacts. And I think uh, basically that's it for this uh, Doppler module that we're going over. Um, okay, so let's, let's begin with the continuous wave Doppler. And look at the name, right? Continuous. All right, continuous wave Doppler all right the name tells you this probe this transducer is continuously sending one sound wave and it is continuously receiving one echo so there is no pulsed wave in here so remember this there is no pulsed wave in here so this system is dedicated it's like all the time producing a continuous wave all the time so in order to achieve that your probe needs to have two crystals and that makes sense that makes sense so one of the crystals will be continuously working and transmission and the other crystal will be continuously working in reception so it makes sense all right it makes sense so um well the question is the question is because remember in the previous lecture i said that this uh, continuous wave Doppler doesn't have a sample volume and I explained that the sample volume is when you're doing pulse wave for example you have your uh, blood blood vessel in here and then you have something like this and then you have this gate right here that's what we call the sample volume but this continuous wave Doppler doesn't have one it doesn't have one so the question is how does this system measure the velocities, right? And the answer is really, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. It's really, it's very easy. So your system, just imagine this is your blood vessel right here, or maybe a cardio valve, because in real life, in real life, we use the continuous wave Doppler for the cardio valves. Okay, when we're looking for uh, regurg or we're looking for a stenosis of a valve. So, but let's assume we are, um, you know, analyzing this blood vessel that has a super high velocity and then we have to use the continuous wave. All right, so this is the probe right here. All right, it's the probe right here. And remember there will be one sound that is going and there is one echo that is coming back. Now, of course, there will be one time that the echo that is coming back will meet on the way 
with the sound that is going in and they basically make an overlap they meet on the way right so they create something that we call the overlap zone we call that the overlap zone and if your cardio valve the flow through the cardio valve gets into that overlap zone congratulations then you have a velocity information a doppler shift information of the flow through the cardio valve if for example this cardio valve or blood vessel as i said before we use this more for the cardio valves but let's assume we can do one blood vessel is it's just down here i mean it's not in the overlap zone then you're not going to have information about the velocity through this structure you're not going to have information of the velocity through this structure so in other in other words this is the overlap zone this is the place where the continuous wave doppler is able to measure because remember as i said before there is no sample volume like the pulse wave has okay there's no sample volume in here so number two we may say the following the system measures measures the flow velocity where in the overlap zone because what because the range ambiguity and what is this range ambiguity remember when the sound that is going into the tissues basically interferes or meets on the way with the sound that is coming back to the probe basically the echo so we know this there is no sample volume in here and that's one of the disadvantages of this system all right there is no sample volume so number three and i think this is the most important when it comes to vascular is that this system is designed to measure high very high velocities without aliasing well remember aliasing is an artifact we talked about this in the previous lecture and because the system is continuously recording the Doppler shift there's no pulse wave there's no Nyquist limit so you can measure this high velocities without aliasing so don't forget about this because it's the, this is the main purpose why we use this system in here okay all right so we have two crystals uh, the system measures in the overlap zone because range ambiguity it measures high velocity without aliasing so we're going good next is in order to produce one continuous wave your system doesn't have something that we call a damping material which is so uh, so name says the backing material or damping material behind the crystal that is responsible for creating something that we call the time off in a pulse wave so time off for listening time but this system remembers continuously list you know continue continuously listening and it continuously is you know basically ringing sending one signal all right so there's no damping material here and because of this the system has a very high sensitivity to the flow all right has a very high sensitivity to the flow and then number five 
this is a type of a spectral Doppler and what is what is a type of a spectral Doppler? It's a type of Doppler that gives you a waveform where you are able to measure velocities, resistive index, positivity index, systolic diastolic ratio, diastolic systolic ratio, and many more type of measurements that we do in Doppler. So um, if we go to the uh, internet, all right, I'm just going to go here, and I say, well, uh, it's a spectral Doppler, and then go ultrasound, and then we have, you know, this is a waveform right here. It's just like this. It's not continuous wave Doppler. All right. Okay. So when you type a spectral Doppler, it's going to give you a waveform. So this one right here. All right. So this one is continuous wave. Now look at the difference between this continuous wave or this one right here. And maybe this pulse wave in here. So the difference is that this pulse wave is... It's clean, it has the window, the continuous wave doesn't have one. It's like type of more, if I want to say, if I want to find a word, is a type of dirty window, you know, it's a type of dirty waveform. It doesn't have a window on it. There's more noise into the wave, and the reason is because the overlap zone, sometimes it extends and long. And you have all those frequencies coming back to the probe, and the system says, hey, have to place those frequencies like in, you know in some place and I will place it in a window you know this is what we call the window right here and the continuous wave doesn't have that it's a type of more noisy dirty um, um, you know Doppler modality so um, so high sensitivity is a type of a spectral Doppler so we're able to measure as a spectral Doppler we're able to measure peak velocities But, listen to this, this system depends on the angulation a lot. Meaning that if you're getting closer to 90 degrees, if you're, uh, as you're getting closer to 90 degrees, you are in a problem. Because your velocity values are going to be far from the reality. Okay, It will give you mistakes in the measurement of the peak systolic velocities. So we need a correct angulation in here. So we may say that this system is angle dependent. All right. And then we have all the aspects that have to do with this continuous wave Doppler. All right. But I'm just going to show you something. Remember, point number three was like this system is designed to measure high velocities without aliasing so that's good to know all right so i'm just going to connect my system now to the software and let's take a look to um to what's going on in here okay that's the system in there all right and then um this is in the cardiac modality right now and i'm just going to find the um i'm just going to do a Continuous wave recording right now. I'm going to use my own heart and uh, let's see how it goes. So I'm going to show you how this continuous wave Doppler works. Let's see how my heart goes. Of course, I can give you a better picture, but I'm not in the right position, and I'm scanning myself. Well, I'm going to try to do my best in here. Try to do my best in here and uh, go a little bit deeper. Well, I have my mitral valve in there.
And I'm going to use the continuous right now. Let's see if I can get a better picture of it. All right, let's get the continuous on. All right, and um, well, that's the continuous wave. Seems like I have a little regurg in my mitral valve in here. I knew it before, that's fine. Uh, but see, that's what I'm talking about. This system, um, you know, it gives you this kind of a noisy waveform where you can do measurements. If I want to measure the um, velocity of my uh, mitral regurgitation, I can go this way and look for uh, mitral regurgitation here. All right, let's go and take a look to... Um, where the mitral regurg is. Okay, mitral regurg velocity max. And then I can go this way, all right? Okay, perfect. So that's the way the continuous looks like. And let me show you something. This is a uh, uh, very interesting, what I'm going to show you right now. I'm still there. Let me come back to uh, B mode right here. And I use continuous one more time. And uh, some people think this right here is the sample volume. No, that's the angulation. And I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna place this in a different position. I'm just gonna place it up here. All right, and still I'm going to have the same result. Let's go there. So look what you think the sample volume is. Remember, continuous wave doesn't have a sample volume, right? So let's take a look to this. Well, my beautiful students, same result in here. As I said before, this system measures the velocity in the overlap zone. And that that I moved up is just basically the angulation. It's not the sample volume. So that's good to know. Remember, the system is designed to measure high velocities, all right? Sometimes if you do this with pulse wave, I mean, you're going to have a liaison. And let's try the pulse wave. Why not? Let's do it. We're going to talk about the pulse wave now anyways. Okay, let's find my heart one more time. So for pulse wave, yes, we have to place the sample volume in the proper position. Wow. Yes, now we have what? We have a liaison, my mitral regurg. You know, this float right here is being caught down here. And look at the pig it's here right now. All right. So that's because, you know, the velocity of this flow is, you know, basically going over the Nyquist limit. It's going over the Nyquist limit. And then your system is going to cut it and place it in the opposite side of the baseline. So if I want to basically fix this, all right, so of course, I will, what? I will increase my scale, all right, or the pulse repetition frequency of this Doppler modality. 
Let's do it and um, you'll see what I'm talking about right now. Let's find one more time my heart. Pulse wave. Let's increase the pulse repetition frequency. We collected this, it's in fourth right now. Let's find my heart warmer time. So pulse repetition frequency now is so high that the sensitivity to the flow is gone. Remember what I said before. If you increase the pulse repetition frequency, then the sensitivity to the flow is going to be affected. Let's try to get a better picture in here so I can uh, use my pulse wave one more time. So the lesion is gone, but we start like missing details of this flow, which is going below the baseline. That's why for this type of problems in the uh, in the heart, so my case is just a uh, trivial mild mitral regurgitation. It's not so bad in here. I know because the cardiologist told me that. And um, so in that case, it's better to use the continuous wave Doppler. Because the pulse wave is going to give you this alias in it. When you try to adjust the pulse repetition frequency to find this flow, then you're going to start having all these problems because you start missing sensitivity to the flow. So, um, but take a look to this. This is the flow of the mitral towards the probe, all right, going towards the ventricle. And look at this beautiful window, all right. There is a window for the pulse wave that the continuous wave doesn't have. All right, so. Um, Yes, let's uh, come back and now we're going to talk about this pulse wave Doppler right now. Okay, let's do it. All right, so now we have the pulse wave Doppler. Look at the name pulse wave, meaning that your wave now, you know, the sound wave now it's going to be like this it has a time on and it has a time off so the time on is the ringing time the time off is the listening time so your crystals are like taking a little break in order to what in order to receive the signal that is coming from the teachers all right so that's what we call you know the time off so meaning that this system with only one crystal is enough to produce a pulse wave signal. So only one crystal, and that's it. All right, with this only one crystal, the system is able to do transmission and reception. Okay, right now the system has a sample volume congratulations we have a sample volume so that means that we can measure the velocity whatever we want we don't have this overlap zone anymore we don't talk about range ambiguity anymore now because we have a sample volume we prefer to use the term range specificity Right, so we have a sample volume, so we have only one crystal. But then we have this huge disadvantage. I don't think it's a huge disadvantage because you have so many things in your machine to fix it. And you know how to fix it because we talked about this before in the previous lecture. And that's the aliasing. So you know, your system is subject to aliasing, all right, because it has a pulse wave. And if you have a pulse wave, remember you're going to have a Nyquist limit. 
And if that's the case, the Doppler shift can go over the Nyquist limit and then your system is going to give you this aliasing, right? Okay, perfect. Subject to aliasing. When it comes to sensitivity, the sensitivity here is not as high as it is in the continuous wave Doppler. So the continuous wave Doppler has more sensitivity to the flow compared to the pulse wave Doppler. And um, right here, we may say that this is also a type of a spectral Doppler. It also measures, you know, it is designed to measure peak velocities. And it is angle dependent. Meaning that, hey, be careful. If you don't use the proper angulation, then your velocities are going to be wrong. That's good to know. You're going to be wrong. Okay? So let's compare the pulse wave Doppler to the continuous wave Doppler. Now, the continuous wave uses two crystals one for transmission, one for perception. And the pulse wave uses only one crystal, all right, which is basically for transmission and perception. Take your notes. Take your time. That's good to know. Let's compare one by one. Continuous wave Doppler uses two crystals, one for transmission, one for reception. Pulse wave Doppler uses only one crystal for transmission and for reception. That's why the system needs to take a break. And we call this the time off, the time when the system is listening to the echo that is coming back. The continuous wave doesn't have a sample volume. It measures the velocities in the overlap zone due to branch and bit width. And the pulse wave Doppler, yes, it has a sample volume so you can place it wherever you want and you will have information from that place. The continuous wave is not subject to aliasing. It is designed to measure high velocities. Remember, there's no pulse wave in here. There's no Nyquist limit. But the pulse wave adopter is subject to aliasing because the wave is pulsed. The sound wave is pulsed. And of course, if this is the case, you're going to have the Nyquist limit. And this Doppler shift can go over the Nyquist limit. Both are spectral Dopplers, okay? Both are designed to measure peak velocities and both are angle dependent. Then remember this pulse wave is, you know, it looks clean and has a nice window compared to this continuous wave. All right, so now I'm just going to open my system one more time and I'm going to show you this pulse wave and I'm going to use my carotid artery for that one. Now let's take a look. Let's see how this goes. I'm just going to use the application for for the carotid. Okay, so this one right here, that's the one. Perfect. All right, let's see how it goes. So pulse wave now. Look at my sample volume. Beautiful. But you see right in the center, right here. Alright, this one right here is the angle, okay? Which is right now at 60 degrees. Look at it here. 60 degrees as the angulation. That's perfect. So what I want to do is just place that angle as parallel as I can compared to the vessel wall. And look at my sample volume right there. All right. And I'm going to say, well, update. So we have a liaison, right? Let me fix it. Pulse repetition frequency scale is going to be increased. Well, 
Now we have a beautiful waveform in here. So one more time, look at this. This is a sample volume. That's the area where you know you're getting all this information is coming from there. It's not coming from here. It's not coming from here. It's coming from right here. And uh, this is the angulation, which is 60 degrees. When you're scanning, try to keep this as parallel as possible to the vessel wall. Look at my uh, my wave in here. So this is systole, this is diastole. If I want to measure, and I say, well, it's going to go to the um, common carotid, all right? And then I'm going to measure my peak systolic. It's this one right here, peak systolic velocity. And I'm going to measure my and the systolic velocity right here. All right? I'm just going to be a little bit more precise, so, you know, a little bit perfectionist sometimes. I'm going to get the peak systolic right here and the, and the systolic velocity right there. Okay. So, um, yes. So your system is giving you information about peak systolic velocity. And see this wave is so clean. It's so nice. There's no range ambiguity. There is range specificity. All right, so um, with this, we're done with this lecture. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, next time, we're going we're gonna to go over color flow. Color flow is more complex. It has a lot of you know, information to go over. We have to know about packet size. We have to know about uh, priority control for the system, where the flow is going, if it is moving towards or away the probe. Um, you know, color maps as well. It's a little bit more complex, but you will like it, and you will understand it, and I hope you're loving this. Please keep studying and keep the good work. I'll see you next time. Thank you for making it.